G'day folks, Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia here. In today's episode, I'm going to show you what you get in a Land Rover for $800. So here's the landy I picked up a couple of years ago. It's been sitting on the farm. I sold it about a year ago and the bloke's only just got round to getting it picked up today. But I thought I'd show you before it goes. Um, so obviously a Series 3. It's um, done some miles, this old girl. And the bloke that owned it actually lived in it for eight years. I don't know if you can see that very well, but all those little red lines is where he travelled. Pretty much got everywhere. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the roads and things have faded out now, but, um, you know, he's driven right through here. Uh, he's had quite some adventures in the old truck. On the back of it, he's got this uh, camper set up. Um, the safari roof up there. It's got this unusual, apparently Australian-made pull-out awning um, that pulled out the back here and made a little shade canopy for him when he was camping. So the back of this is all fitted out with um, goodies. There's a fold down table there and of course the awning would pull out over the top uh, and you'd have a nice little camp set up here. He had a bed with under, under bed storage there, a little pop up kitchen, sink, cupboard arrangement there with some overhead lockers and things. So, guy that owned it pretty much lived in this for eight years that was his home um, and he traveled around Australia with his uh, 75 year old mum for quite a while uh, they had a jolly good old time the thing you notice about this is all the panels are in really good condition it's very straight that's probably one of the better tailgates I've ever seen um, and all those panels are pretty straight the paint on it's all pretty good it would probably polish up a treat Travel stickers there from Burketown, Simpson Crossing, a bit of NT Australia. I think they're standard stickers for every old Land Rover that's done some miles. A few more around the corner there. The old freshwater tap down there. It's been a while since it was fresh. Quite a bit of weight in this big heavy arm, but took a couple of spare wheels. Um, this truck came with uh, six spare tyres when I uh, when I bought it. I pinched those and put them on um, other projects. Mildura, Herget Springs, Eden and Dada, Cradle Mountain in Tassie, Twelve Apostles. Frill Neck Lizard, I haven't been there. I can't even read that one, but. We take a gander inside here, you've got a good set of seats, lovely leather covered steering wheel there, that's a beauty. Um, all of this is actually reasonable, with one exception. The firewall and the doors are pretty much completely dissolved. If we head down south here into the nether regions, Pull back the hair, you can see what a nasty, nasty, nasty thing has been done here. That's all some kind of epoxy bog slash filler that old mate has used to try and get this through rego one last time. Apparently it worked. Gotta love South Coast inspectors. It's like spray painting without a mask. Turning around there, you get a bit of a view of the back. You can see through the top of the bulkhead here, it's pretty chewed out. It's worse on the other side there. Um, this whole bulkhead is pretty much dissolved. You can see the, uh, see into the fifth dimension through that hole. The pillar's completely gone. Um, I don't think you get the ABC or SBS with that one. Coming around to the front here. Old plastic landy grill. Just excuse me while I open this. We 
open wide, come inside, it's play school. Sorry about the wobbly camera. So the original motor in this has been replaced with a Daihatsu truck diesel motor. Uh, this actually runs. Um, it, I drove this car onto the trailer when I bought it. Um, it actually had the clutch working, the brakes were working. As soon as I parked it on the trailer, the um, brakes dropped their lunchbox and all the fluid leaked out. So obviously the seals had gone from sitting for a few years. But um, yeah, you can see there that firewall's pretty crusty. Up here is all pretty crusty. This has been bogged up to conceal the sins. Get it through Rego one last time, but that was many years ago. Down on this level, you can see this um, chassis has actually been coated with sump oil, so it's actually saved it from corroding. Uh, it's the same everywhere, so you can see there the outriggers are actually pretty good. And the chassis is quite solid owing to the amount of oil that's on it. Um, old mate said he painted it with sump oil, that old trick. But it has actually worked, it has kept this reasonably solid. Um, it'll want to be cleaned up and retreated if you, if this was to be restored. See there, the front dumb irons aren't too bad. There's a bit of corrosion in them, but this is all restorable if it was uh, to be restored. But uh, I suspect the guy that bought it's going to part it out. Um, who knows? It's their car now. That's the um, McNamara diff. Some, I don't, I'm not sure how these things work. Sure, there's a lot of Landy boffins out there in Landy land that would uh, be totally into that. The diff lock. As most of you probably know, these came out with the Salisbury diffs. Um, the rear one's got the McNamara locking locking mechanism in it. Can't even say that word. Um, anyway, they're a good diff. Aussie reinforcement there. So they're 1990, 91 National Parks Pass. So that was probably the last time it was on the road. Broome WA, gateway to the Kimberley. Not sure what that says, I think it might be Cobar. Exmouth, Exmouth. Just a South Australian badge. This one's a beauty. I think I've been there. I think it's near Dapto. Old Crocodilus. Piece of history. Here's a beauty, old Ayers rock sticker. Pine Creek. Cape Tribulation. Not sure, I think that one says Rabbit Snot. I'm not sure that's a real place, but it is Australia, so it could be. You'll notice down here, it was set up pretty well for long range driving. He's got um, four diesel tanks in this actually. Um, one, two, there's another inlet on the other side here, but um, that fills a total of four tanks in it. So he had quite a bit of range. There's his other diesel tank there. Um, so there was two little tanks, two big ones. That's a lot of fuel on board, but he didn't carry jerry tins, so I think he said it had something like 1,600 kilometres of range. Over here in the pilot area, got that nice classic uh, leather finished steering wheel. The roof's in good order. Windscreen. Got the secondary windscreen down here. You can see, keep an eye on the road through that. Make sure you're driving on tarmac or dirt, this facility here. Um, as I said, firewall is pretty much gone. It's, um, oh, look at that, a bit of silicon, silicon firewalls. Could be a new thing. Anyway, poor old girl, she needs a bit of love. She's a great old truck, off to a new home now. I'm not sure what the new owner will do. He'll either uh, restore it or part it out, one of the two. But um, it was on its way to the tip when we got it. 
Um, we sold this for $800 to the new owner, which is pretty good value. That uh, rear diff, the McNamara, is worth $800. The roof is probably worth $800 to a Parenti owner. They, they fit straight onto a Parenti, so that's a great roof. All the body panels, everything. Um, four fuel tanks. There's plenty of good parts on there, so the bloke that bought it's going to make a quid out of it. Um, but I was sort of hoping he'd restore it. Uh, it's had a long history, rattling down the road, and it'd be nice to see it continue its journey around the country. I'd be happy to have that door hanging in my workshop for 800 bucks, actually. So, old mate's just arrived. Just in the nick of time to pick up this uh, yellow mustard series three. We'll get it on for him. So there you go folks, that's what you get for $800. Bear in mind when you're buying a car, think about the amount of time and the amount of money you got to put into it and try not to pay too much if you can help it. Um, that car, cheap enough, but it's also going to have a lot of time and money spent on it to get it back on the road where it should be. Uh, a running project is always a better op proposition than uh, one that doesn't work because you know what you're kind of working with. Either way, it's going to cost you a lot of money to do up a Land Rover. I'm a great believer in getting these cars and putting them where they're meant to be. I don't try to make money out of them. Um, it's a ridiculous thing to try and make money out of restorations of cars. I do Land Rovers because I like them. These, just for fun, um, I'm never going to make money out of doing restorations of Land Rovers. So, that'll put a uh, cat among the pigeons, but that's the way it is. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for the week, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, hit that like button because that helps me get my channel out. Uh, I don't make much money out of this. I make a couple of bucks an episode, so it kind of helps if you help me. Um, I guess that's it. Thanks to the patrons, as always, for their financial support. Until next week, see you later, folks. <laughs>